In this video, we're going to look at some of the numerical outputs available in Karumba. So, if we're over here, out of the um, Analyze component, we have a few things that we can get. So first, directly off of this component, we can get the maximum displacement for the whole model. And you can look at that value, um, which is good, but we don't know where that's coming from without another component. So a, a valuable component is this beam displacement. And what that will do is give us the output in the um, translation output of the displacement for points on each individual member. So if we attach a panel off to, of this, and I just have a simplify component on here, and what that is doing is listing these beam numbers as just a single number there, rather than this whole string. It's the same information, it's just a little easier to look at. Um, so I have beam zero, which is zero, beam one, which is one. And then I have some points in here. So you'll notice off of the left side of this in the uh, number of results per element, I have a panel in here specifying three. By default, if we unhook this, this is at two, in which case I would just see the displacement of the endpoints of each component. But the maximum displacement is most likely at the middle. So I want to attach this um, three in here and add a middle component, which is the middle value out of each of these. So I can guess from looking at the colors in this model that this darkest beam, number one, would have my maximum displacement value likely in the middle. So if I look at my maximum displacement, this uh, 0 0.029962, and I come over here into this panel, I can see that beam one does in fact house the greatest displacement value. And I can scroll all the way through these to take a look and make sure that that's true. And in fact it is. So using these two together, I can find out where that maximum displacement is actually happening. I'm delete that panel. So similarly, we have this B forces component, or a beam forces, but when you go to search for that, you actually need to type B dash uh, forces to get beam forces. If you type the full word, it won't pop up. Um, and out of this, we have a couple different outputs. Um, the Vs are shear, the Ms are moments, what we're specifically going to be looking at here are the shear forces about Z and the moment forces about Y. And that's because with this vertical loading condition, those are the only places where we're getting shear and moment forces. Um, and we can check that with a panel real quick. So out of the VZ, the shear in the Z direction, I've got some information, I have some data. VY, I've got nothing. Um, you can see the same thing off of MY and MZ. So VZ is my shear in the Z direction, it's the vertical shear. Um, and once again, I have this set where the number of resultant points is set to three, so I'm looking at the ends and the middle of each beam. Um, we're being assumptive here about where these forces are happening. But uh, to find the maximum value, what you can do is go ahead and just look at this panel and scroll through and look for the highest value. So it looks like these ones here, 2395 is the highest value. Okay, that's true. So we've got a 2395 in beam number five. So the next question is where that is. Um, it's difficult to tell the numbering convention here. An easy way to work around this is to just display the uh, shear diagram, which we can do over here in beam view. So if we go ahead and click on filled, we can actually click on numbers too. And then VZ will display the shear diagram. I guess those numbers are a little too much. Um, and we can whoops, zoom in over here. And we can see that that line is tilting up in this direction. So we're actually experiencing our maximum shear force at this end. Similarly, we can look at our uh, moments and we can get the numerical value for our moments out of um, this panel. And again, we can just uh, scroll through and look for the maximum value. So I'm seeing 155 on beam 5 and 155 on beam 7. And again, I can come over here into the beam view component and I can turn on the moment diagram and I can see that, that the maximum end is this far end here. Just to briefly go through some other outputs, it's worth clicking through the radio buttons in both beam view and model view. If we turn off our diagrams here, 
Um, you can display in the render settings for beam views. We can be looking at um, the maximum displacement. We can be looking at the cross section of the beam as a rendering. We can look at the utilization, and this is showing um, tension and compression. And we can also look at the axial stress. So those are worth, worth knowing about, worth clicking through. Um, also over here in model view, we have a few different displays. So in the scales, we can be uh, showing the deformation, which is, is just uh, showing the sag in the beams. It's hard to tell here because these ones are pretty stiff. We can be showing the support reactions. We can display the loads. We can display or not display the supports, the axes, and the joints. If we go down here, it's the same where the um, slider here is actually not changing the value, but the display. Um, and so you can click the click on this uh, and slide that, and then we have some radio buttons here. These structural tags are useful. You can see the number of the nodes, which are the, the intersection points, the element tags, um, the element IDs, uh, which is related to this uh, naming that we did back here, calling this beam 1. Um, we can also see the cross-section names, and if we assigned a material, we could also see the material. By default, that's steel.